Hello, I'm Alex and I'm 11 years old. 11 years, seven months in, five days to be exact. And I have Asperger's syndrome, which is something that is not used a lot. However, it's basically high functioning autism, but like really intelligent people. Some people that have it or had it include people like Bill Gates. He's one of those kind of people. Brian May, Steve Jobs. And one of the biggest thing I have for Asperger's syndrome is a crazy good memorization of dates. Like usually I can receive an event and I can say that day, that year, that month, and I can describe basically exactly what happened. And today I'm going to be showcasing basically what I have. So what you're trying to say is that you have, you can recollect dates that have personal significance to you going back to when you first became aware of the calendar. You would have been around five years old at the time and now you're 11. Mm -hmm. However, I can, I can remember dates back when I was like two or three years old. How? Because you didn't have any calendar awareness then? Because, because probably like my parents said it, like my parents probably like said the date. Okay. Okay. Fine. So Alex, I am going to just ask you some questions about things that most kids wouldn't know. Um, just to demonstrate that you remember things very, very well and you remember dates. Okay. So, can you tell me, let's start with an easy one. What was your first day of kindergarten? August 25th, 2014. Okay. Um, what was your, when was your first trip to the nurse's office in school? January 26th, 2015. Okay. In the last five years, can you tell me the dates that you've had strep throat. Okay, so November 4th, January 23rd, I mean November 4th, 2015, no 16, sorry, um, January 23rd, 2017, February 18, 2016, March 11th, 2016, It's been about four times. I haven't gotten strep in a long time. Okay. I got it I got it around four times. Okay. In that span about every in the span of about every between every like two to five months. Okay. I got it. You've had the flu at least once in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. When was that? I first started having symptoms on January 14th, 2018. And when I officially tested positive, it was January 15th, 2018, which was um, MLK Junior Day. Let's talk birthday parties. Okay. Okay. Um, you have been to quite a few friends' birthday parties over the years. Yes, Let's... definitely a lot less considering I am in the older childhood, um, up close to entering teenhood. You are now, but there for a while, little kids, younger elementary school kids have a lot of birthday parties that they go to because that's how social stuff works. So let's start with Grant. Um, I know you went to at least a couple of birthdays that Grant had, birthday parties. When were those parties? So the first one I went to was on October 25th, 2015. And the last one that I went to was October 8th, 2018. Okay. Um, you went to your friend Annie's birthday party. Mm -hmm. Oh, you went to a couple of those. When were they? So I went to them for four years. Can you describe the birthday parties individually along with the dates? Mm -hmm. So two of them, 2015 and 2016, were both on January 3rd of that year. And one of them was a, the January 3rd, 2015 one was a Frozen themed birthday party. 
So January 3rd, 2016, it was at a daycare center um, where they had like a small little like tree hut and then they also had like some Legos and there wasn't really all that much to it. Like we planted flowers, but that was also on January 3rd of that year. And then there was one, it was January. It was on January 7th, 2017. It was a sleepover at her house. Um, I didn't actually sleep over because her house was like 30 minutes away from mine. And then on New Year's Day, 2018, basically a repeat of what happened the previous year. You have recently, over the last year or two, started a new sport. Um, you do gymnastics, parkour, trampoline, and ninja warrior training. Tell me those dates that you started. Okay, so my first class that I did was August 1st, 2019. The reason I entered that was because I'm an actress and I wanted to have some stunt training, and so that's what we figured would be best. And it's actually turned into a very cool hobby. I was in level one of six, um, actually it was level two, but um, basically what happened was that um, there's a um, younger kid class for parkour and that's basically like level one. So um, yeah, August 1st, 2019 was parkour. And then for gymnastics and trampoline, the first day I started that was September 6th. 2019 I remember that much more vividly like when it comes to details however some things that I did was uh, mid three-quarter front flips which on the trampoline which is basically front flip to your back and then I also did stuff like learning like learning how to do um, backward rolls and like learning how to like tuck for back flips and stuff like that and then for American Ninja Warrior, the first time I went, it was a, it was December 5th, 2019. I went to a gym that's right across the street from me and I did some simple obstacles like the ring toss and I did wishes going down. Nowadays, I am pretty high level, I'd say. And if you're wondering about where I am on all of those as of now, for gymnastics, I am intermediate level, um, but close to advanced. That's basically trampoline, but I actually do some board gymnastics as well. Um, for parkour, I'm currently level four of six, aka level three, excluding the um, park heads is what they call it. And then American Ninja Warrior, I don't have like full on classes. I I simply just like go to the, to the ninja gym and I do training and I'm and the coaches said I would be about a level four of six as well. Have you ever been to the school nurse? Yes, I have. Give me those dates and tell me why. So the first time I ever went to the school nurse was January 26, 2015. And the reason I had to go to the school nurse was because there was a basketball there was a kid playing with a basketball and it hit me in the eye, so I had to go to the nurse for that. And then the next time I went to the nurse after that was April 13th, 2015. I went for basically the same reason, um, except I slipped on the bathroom floor. May 6th, 2015, I was pulling down blocks from um, a shelf where it shouldn't have been and the blocks completely crashed on me, the bin completely scarred me, and so it ripped off a lot of my skin. September 24th, 2015, I went because I was um, swinging in between tables and I basically flipped, and I basically flipped. I don't know how I did that, but... And then I had to go February 18th, 2016, because I remember he had like really bad strep throat and I didn't know it at the time, but I just simply, though like I just simply was 
doing this because I had a really hard time speaking. And so they immediately got me passed to the nurse's office and sure enough, I had like a, I had a 102.2 degree fever. And so they sent me home, got tested for strep, came back positive. And then I went on May 26th, uh, 2016, because I was playing with the paper airplane and I tripped on a bunch of rocks. So there was that. I went on November 3rd, 2016, because I had a fever. And the next day I did get another positive test for strep throat. And then I got to the nurse's office again on, um, I actually went, I actually went on October 17th and September 16th for lice 2016. Ew. <laughs> yeah, and after, sometimes. And after that, I really haven't been to the nurse's office that much. I basically have had like no nurse off nurse's office for about a year or two. What about the visit in fourth grade? Oh yeah, I was about to discuss that next. Um, I was I was playing a game called flag tag where we basically had flag belts on our waist and I was and I was like the one one of two girls and there was like nineteen boys playing. And I remember I had a really big crush on this red haired boy who was like who was a sprinter and he was like very very handsome and I remembered that I was actually playing and I was trying to get his black belt and I didn't get his black belt and he didn't get my black belt but basically what happened was that his forehead completely crashed into my forehead and my eyes and I crashed and my forehead crashed into his forehead and so he wasn't injured but I was and so I had to go to the nurse's, the nurse's office for that. What was the date? August 31st, 2019. Yeah, I mean not was... 2019, 2018, sorry. I That was painful. Yeah, I, I was diagnosed with a moderate concussion. Okay. And all right. Um, there was a time when you were in kindergarten and I delivered t-shirts to your classroom because I was on the PTA. What date was that? December 13, 2014. Okay. What date did we get Wrigley, our dog? April 30th, 2020. What date did we get Myla, the cat? Myla, we got her on October 30th, 2019. Myla, you are a cat. When did we get Jillian, our cat? November 18th, 2015. When did we get Oscar, the cat? January 3rd, 2016. When did we get Luna? I mean, not 16, 18, sorry. Okay. When did we get Luna, our dog? August 30th, 2016. When did you first get fish? The first fish I got was on April 30th, 2016. And then I got one the next day, May 1st, 2016, because that fish died. And then I got fish on June 2nd, 2016. I got fish on June 20th. 2016 to add my to my 10 gallon tank and those all died within 12 hours and then i got fish on june 28th um 2016 because another one of my fish died she was a very unhealthy fish and then i got and then the last time i got fish was on august 11 2016 and that and one of those fish lived for eight months and that was the longest i've had a fish your first day of softball practice ever was? August 14, 2017. Okay. Which I still play it to this day, but I'm not on the field currently. Like I, I'm not on a team because of the COVID restrictions and we just think it's too unsafe. Okay, you played on a basketball team that your dad coached very briefly. Um, what was your first game date? My first game date was April 2nd, 2016. However, I skipped that game date because 
I was prepared for my birthday and I had my birthday party that day. So I missed my first game. You missed your first game. Shame on okay. me. <laughs> you played soccer when you were four, I believe. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that date? Do you remember the um, when you would have started playing soccer? That it would have been before calendar awareness. June 27, 2013. Okay. How can you remember even though you weren't really aware of calendars at the time? You wouldn't have even been in regular school yet. Because my parents mentioned the date a lot. Okay. We did? Mm -hmm. I mentioned. I heard you guys mention it a few times. Okay. And so that's how I remember So you it. remember. We took a two-week road trip across the U.S. a couple of years ago. Give me those dates. So the date we left was July 15, 2017. We went from Texas in the, into Minden, Louisiana. When did we arrive in Louisiana? Same date. Okay. And then after that, we went from Louisiana to Montgomery, Alabama. And that was July 16th. Went through Mississippi. And then we went to Flora. And then um, on July 17th, we went from Montgomery, Alabama to Savannah, Georgia to see my grandparents. Spent two days there. July 19, 2017, we went from Savannah, Georgia to Hilton Head, South Carolina to go to the beach. And then we went up to Ash, and then our destination was Asheville, North Carolina. Spent two days there. And actually, when we were just about to leave, there was a motorcycle crash. Um, the guy, the guy in that crash, he barely survived. Like he had broken bones everywhere. The crash right in front of our hotel room. Yes, like right in front. Like literally everyone in the pool saw it. Everyone that was looking out their window saw it. And at least everyone heard the sound effects of the breaking. And we were watching Paw Patrol, so we saw it was, and so we thought it was sound effects, but nope. Motorcycle crash to where that guy almost died. Next destination? Next destination was Alexandria, Virginia. Date? July 21st, 2017. July 23rd, 2017. We, um, we had plans to go to New Haven, Connecticut next, but we were stopped in Maryland because, Ocean City to be specific, because there was a huge flood. Um, of like it was a huge flash flood and it was storming all day and there was a hurricane around the time, I think. And so we had to deal with that. July 24th, we Finally made it up to Springfield, Massachusetts. And then July 26th, we drive down to um, Northeast Pennsylvania. July 27th, we drive to Hershey, Pennsylvania, go to the Hershey Chocolate Factory, and we stayed the night at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. July 28th, we went down to Nashville, Tennessee. July and July 29th, we went from Nashville, Tennessee to our, um, to our home. We stopped, um, we didn't stop. Um, we, we made it to about the Dallas, Fort Worth metropolitan area. And we didn't get home until July 30th, but that was because it was 3 a.m. that morning. Okay, thank you. So Alex, it's very obvious that you remember dates in a pretty extraordinary way. Can you tell me, how are you remembering dates so easily? Um, what are you seeing in inside your head when somebody asks you a question about what happened um, or when something happened or even what happened on a certain date? What, what process is your brain going through? So basically, whenever there's a date in my life and whenever I have some significant memory of it or even anything really basically with my brain my my brain in a way basically like basically how I would describe it is taking a picture except not literally like I would remember that date specifically and I would basically have like camera memory it's like photographic memory for dates yes okay um if you ever heard of the Cam Jansen series that's basic. That's basically what I have, except it's not for uh, the like events. It's for dates, and I have it for events too, just not as extraordinary as dates. Tell me about Cam Jensen. I'm not totally familiar with that. 
So it's a book series about this girl who has a photographic memory. And basically, like, if she sees something, like, for say, there was one time she went to this museum and she noticed um, uh, that there were 34 bones in this specific dinosaur, but three of the bones were missing. She took a photo of the last time she went to that museum where, there, where the full bone structure was up. And when she, and when she got to that same dinosaur, um, skeleton, she, she basically grabbed the photo from her brain, not literally, obviously, but basically she pulled the photo up in her brain and it did not match up to what was there currently. So you're saying, you're saying like her, your brain takes a picture of dates. Yes. Okay. Do you think this is normal for people to have? Not at all. Like, if there's, like, a super significant event, like, for, say, the day you graduate high school, yeah. pretty much everyone's going to remember that date. However, there's a lot of people who don't. And I even remember some of the smallest events. Like what? Um, I was too... I wasn't even two years old at this time, but... And I don't really have a huge recollection of what happened. However, I was less than two years old, close to, close to turning two, and we, and me and my mother moved to Nashville, Tennessee on March 11th, 2011. Wow, you know that date. How do you, how do you know? You wouldn't have been aware of a calendar at the time. How do you know this? Because I, because that day and a lot of times from that, my parents have discussed the idea while well, my mom considering that she was the only parent that took me, but yeah, she would repeat the date a lot of times and she mm -hmm. actually said the date a lot on that specific day. And so that's how I remember the date. You remember. So like you, even before you could see calendars, and before I even you knew could how to hear read. a date, before you could read, take, you could hear take the Take a date. photo and boom, even I it's it. like an auditory photo as well. Yes, and this is and this is ten years later, and I still know the date. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, let's give a little bit of background here. Um, All right. When did you start to read? I started to read at three years old. I I actually started spelling at two years old. Hey, Jilly. Hold on, let me grab my cat. Okay. You're spelling at two. How much were spell you spelling at two? I was spelling about a hundred words plus at the time, and they were actually and they weren't words like mama, dada, stuff like that. I mean, of course, I could spell those. However, I could spell words as extraordinary as crocodile at the time. Okay, and I've got a list of those words I can verify I remember, that for sure. And then reading, I began reading at three. I had an iPad. <laughs> It was like one of the first iPads ever. I had an iPad and I had a lot of apps downloaded that helped me with my reading. Here we are. A few more questions, Alex. Yes. You have told me that you can, you, you know what days are on specific dates. Um, you just know, how do you know? Because, I mean, even before it was, like, truly calendar aware, like, usually my parents would say a date, like, for say, um, I'm gonna throw a random date out there. This isn't, like, a specific memory date. Um, I'm just gonna throw out September 2nd, 2013. Okay, what day was that? I know that was a Monday because I was able to read Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You would have been four? Yes. Okay. So. And I will say that day was actually a significant day because that was my first day of preschool. Okay. You remember this. Okay. Um, November 5th, 2015, what day? November 5th, 2015? Mm-hmm. That was a... So, Halloween was on... And this actually requires a lot of math, too. Halloween was on a Saturday, and so, usually, and so that would have been on Thursday because Sunday would have been the first, 
Monday would have been second, Tuesday would have been the third, Wednesday would have been fourth, and Thursday would have been the fifth because Halloween 2015 that was on a Saturday. So and so and so not only was I and so not only would I just simply read a calendar, but it actually requires a lot of math. You're doing date math. So yes. you're you're going back to events where you know what the date was and the day and then you're doing associative math. Yes. And math is a strong point for you. Do you wanna talk about that real quick? Yes. So Do you like math? Yes, I love it. It's definitely my favorite subject. If you ever ask me what my favorite subject is, I will never say, oh, I love English. I love reading, which don't get me wrong. I love reading and I have the best English teacher in the world. Credit to you. Um, but I will always be like, math is the best, no doubt about it. And some of my strong points in math, I'm in the pace, I'm in pace math, which is, um, which in my district is basically like, the advanced placement math like advanced math and I actually have a 100 in that and some things some of my stronger points in math equal um I I have a really good I'm really good with equations like so you're in middle school and you have a 100 in math you've got a perfect math advanced, score advanced math 100 in advanced, advanced math. math okay good to know Okay, let's try a different date. Okay. September 15th, 2012. Okay, so younger years are not as hard to, are not as easy to remember. However, September 5th, 2012, that would have likely been a Tuesday. That would have been a Tuesday because that was the day I started um, Mother's Day up. You remember that? Yes. <laughs> you were... Had you turned three yet? Yes. Okay, you were three. My mother... My mother doesn't... <laughs> my mother doesn't even know the age. Bravo to you! Okay, wait, Your wait, wait. Your 11-year-old child knows more about math than a 43-year-old woman. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. No, wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> ah, you love math and you're not short on sarcasm. Thank you. Okay. Um, March 10th, 2016. What day? So that would have been a Thursday because I had gotten, because I had to, because I had grown up in school five minutes after I first showed up on campus and that was on a Tuesday and so eight plus two equals ten and so that was the Thursday. <laughs> okay. Um June twenty seventh, two thousand eighteen. Okay, so Independence Day in that year, it would have been a Wednesday, and so I usually go back. Um and then I go um, to Sunday to first, and then I go, um, and then I sub and then I go to thirty, and then I subtract three. So it would have been a Wednesday because thirty minus three equals twenty seven, and and Saturday would have been thirtieth of June. Okay, let's pick one more, and then we will wrap this up. All right. Okay. Um, March. First, 2015. So that would have been a, that would have been a Sunday because I remember I went birthday party shopping on the 21st of March and that was a Saturday. And so I basically subtract 14, which would have been equal to seven. Then the seventh was a Saturday and seven minus six equals one. and one was a Sunday. Okay. So Alex, you have Asperger's, um, yes, I do. which is a, it's high functioning autism. High function, um, high functioning autism, but you are except, but you are exceptional with, um, but you are exceptional with education. Like you, 
um, will wipe you automatically know a lot of stuff that you would usually be taught, but you automatically know it. So when you were three, you were diagnosed with high functioning autism and you, you barely, barely missed the diagnosis, diagnostic criteria for Asperger's syndrome. Um, and everything about you is very much that of someone with Asperger's. Yes. So you self-identify as somebody who has Asperger's and I, I fully believe that that's more the case. Um, so essentially though, you have a form of autism. Do you feel that it's a strength for you? Personally, I do feel like it is a strength because it definitely helps out with my education a lot. Like, I don't really have to worry about failing a test because a couple weeks ago there was actually a test that we had to do and pretty much everyone in the grade that was advanced level math absolutely bombed it. And I was like one of the very few people in the grade that actually did successful. And so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. And Do you ever have to study? Barely. Yeah. You just, you hear stuff and you remember it. You see stuff and you remember it. There's some things that I even teach by myself, that I even teach myself without even having to receive instructions. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So school is very easy for you. Yes. And you have top-notch grades without trying. So that's definitely a strength. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will say one of my main weaknesses is that I do have a harder time making friends. Okay. I will say for Asperger's, I am definitely very social. Like I do have a lot, of, like I do have a lot of friends. I, like I sit in the cafeteria and I talk with my friends. I, um, I, um, when I'm moving from one class to another, I stop by and talk with some of my friends. So, however, it's not as easy as someone that doesn't have it. Like, it just doesn't click that much, like, and so, like, and I, and I will, and so, basically, I'm not, and I'm also not as socially aware, like, I have a little bit more trouble understanding basic mannerisms, and I also have a little bit more trouble, I basically lack social awareness, that's one of, I mean, I have, a decent social awareness however compare however I do somewhat lack social awareness and so that's definitely a weakness you have you have friends in fact you have a couple of really good friends do your friends does your friend group realize that you're different um they do and they actually and usually whenever they see someone they're like oh get out of the way I don't want to be around you but with me, they just see me as a typical person. They see me, this, and they act, and all my friends actually see me as a really cool person. Like everyone wants you to. You are be, a cool person. Like everyone wants to be around me. Everyone wants to, like everyone wants to see what my life is about. Everyone, everyone actually thinks that what I have is very cool. And I remember, this actually happened at my beginning of the school year. If you're wondering, the date, it was August. 20th of 2020 I was in my seventh period class which was English and I remember at the end of the class I was describing what Asperger's was like for me and how it benefited me and every and every one of my class everyone actually was just in awe they were like they were like oh that's very cool I like some I actually kind of wish that I had it too it actually sounds like actually sounds very beneficial and my English teacher I really want to say her name because she's so amazing let's and call her Mrs. B yeah she's special isn't she yeah she she's definitely like my favorite teacher of all time she's she's a really amazing person I love her and she one of the reasons we click so much is because her daughter actually deals with the same thing I I have and um and like so she actually understands me and she and regard in regardless of her actually understanding me like she thinks I'm a really cool person and she actually says like I'm like one of her favorite students um and like I'm basically her dream student. <laughs> I can imagine the teachers love working with you because you are yeah. passionate about learning and you're smart 
and you're driven and you're going to do amazing things in this world. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell everybody? Um, that's about it. I, I just want, basically what I'm trying to teach out of this is that despite having something that's like clinically diagnosed, there's always, there's always a way you, where you can come through and you can always basically overpower everyone else and there's always going to be some benefits and just because I have it, it doesn't mean that I'm like a bad person or that I'm disgusting or anything like that. I mean, in my way, everyone should be aware that having autism and Asperger's, um, there in a lot of ways, it is actually a positive and not a negative. And I want, and my goal is to have people be aware of that. And I want people to be, and I want people to be aware of what the real world is. Some people would call it a superpower. Mm -hmm. My my English teacher, she calls it a superpower. She's like, um, she's like, I'm go. She's like, in some ways, I actually wish I had that superpower girlfriend. <laughs> Alex, thank you for your time. Um, yeah, you're welcome. You're a really cool kid. Thank you.